Alright, welcome back to another one hour mix. Graham here from the recordingrevolution.com having fun mixing an entire song in 60 minutes. Why are we doing this? I'll point you back to the first video. You can click on that right there uh, where we're talking about Parkinson's law and the strategy and the hack and the psychology and the mindset of why even do a mix in an hour. This isn't just for the sake of mixing quickly. This is to help you. So if you haven't tried this or if you think this is a really dumb idea, then I really suggest you you give it a shot. This is only going to help you, okay? This is purely free. This is a great idea to help you see the forest for the trees and focus on the big wins, the things that will really actually make a difference in your mix, like the big, big differences, instead of getting caught up on the minutia and the little details. We've already covered volume and pan. We've already covered mix bus processing, EQ, and last week we looked at compression, and we've taken our song pretty far. This week, we're adding some of the more subtle things that make a difference, um, like ambience, reverbs, and delay. So I'm going to hit my timer. We're going to have 10 minutes of mixing. I'm just going to open up a reverb and a delay, get some settings, balance some tracks into it, sort of see what's helping, what's not. And then at the end, I'm going to do a little before and after and briefly surmise what I was doing and why I made the decisions I made. And hopefully, we will make this song a little bit better. All right, you ready for some more mixing? Let's do this. Today is Ambience Day, and it begins... Now. Okay, that's our song. Get a couple of stereo aux tracks. Verb for one, delay for the other. Solo save them, route them to the mix bus. Now let's grab a reverb. Good old Dverb has been around for decades. And let's move on to a delay. And let's start with the drums. Let's route them to the reverb. Bring up a little bit in each. Let's grab our Reverb. Let's take a listen to what we got here with just the drums. Get an idea of what this reverb sounds like. Okay, very cavernous. Let's try a small plate.
this to a delay. Look at that. Let's see where he's actually singing. And all the things you bought for me, I wear for other eyes to see. But you
10 minutes there we go so that was quick I felt like I was doing well but then I wanted to tweak a bit more so again I went for the quick wins and then as I had some more time I wanted to refine and that that's okay that's the point of this exercise so I felt myself wanted to spend a little bit more time tweaking but there's more on that next week as well so this is going to tie into next week what did I do and did it make any difference so again you saw me create just these two tracks the verb and the delay and on one, I put a small plate, uh, the reverb, and I rolled off some of the top end inside the plugin, as well as adding an EQ afterwards where I rolled off some top end and some bottom end, sort of shaped the, the sound of the reverb. Um, and let's focus on that sound first. So we'll bypass the delay, and let's listen to, uh, let's say, verse into a pre-chorus. Um, and I'll just kick the reverb on and off. Take me in and clean me up. Show me again. Your love will not dry up. Very subtle, right? This is going to be hard to hear in and out unless you're really listening on your good headphones or on your, your monitors at home in your, in your studio because this is less of a, a look-at-me effect and more of a reverb glue. Okay, I've talked about this back in five minutes to a better mix. If you haven't watched that video, go watch it, where I'm using reverb in this case as a small plate, which is a very subtle reverb, as a glue. All these tracks were recorded you know, overdub different times, different places in the house, some in the foyer, some in a closet, some in a master bedroom, some had tiled surfaces, some had uh, dead carpeted surfaces. So um, they don't have a, a sameness. They weren't all tracked in a same space. So when I do use reverb, and I don't always, um, I like to use it in this capacity. I like to create one space that is not super descript. It just gives a little length to everything, a little depth to everything, and then send via sends and buses, a little bit of the kick, the snare, the overheads, the, the guitar, acoustic guitars, you know, lead guitar and, um, and his vocal into the same reverb so that all of a sudden it sounds like this band is playing together in one space. And it also elongates things a little bit so it's not this really dry um, sound. And I, I don't want you to hear reverb, I just want you to to feel like it's a little bit larger than life. So I'm not trying to get reverb hurt. Does that make sense? That's what I'm doing with the reverb. And then delay, um, I really like the mod delay in Pro Tools, um, but it's basically a delay that sort of modulates the, the repeat. So it's not a complete clean digital delay. It just adds some, some texture and color to it. It makes the delay interesting, more like a tape delay or something from the records that I'm used to hearing back in the day when delay was a cool effect. Um, and so you can play with any kind of delay, but what I love to do is roll off the top end on the repeats so that, you know, um, his repeating vocal, if we get to it here. You take me in and clean me. His repeats, the, the me, 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 me. It's not as bright and top endy as it could if you cranked it up here. You take me in then that retains all its clarity. And the problem with that is that all of a sudden you hear too much of the repeats. You take me in. So that's why I roll off a lot of the top end on the repeats so that what you're left with, wherever that is here, is a more of a subtle. You take me in. There you go. It elongates the 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 tail of the the vocal, much like a reverb, but it's more interesting than reverb. And I make this a little more obvious uh, right here. I've got a little bit of feedback, um, and I've just I just left it in the default setting. 
I don't even know if it's a quarter note or if it's eighth note. It's, it's sort of like a slap delay the way I've got it set. So I'm using a send to bring a little bit of that in on the vocal so that it sounds like he's in a space. You take me in. And then I've also got it on some of the lead guitar parts. So they're extended a little bit more interesting. So like here, the pre-chorus guitar. Right, it's panned a little bit to the left. And this gives just a little bit of a slap echo, like it's in a, a space as well. And this is a little more prominent than the reverb, but together it adds a nice touch. And in fact, I've also put it on the background vocals to extend them a little bit and give them a little bit of a slap in the chorus. Here we go. Again, just extends them a little bit. It's, it doesn't add much. So let's um, just take it before and after. I'm going to bypass the reverb and the delay. And um, this one's going to be harder to hear. But again, this is, I've gone for the big, big wins early on, and now we're, we're narrowing down to the smaller things that make a little bit less of a, of a difference, but they still help. And let's take it to uh, a verse where it's a little bit more mellow. Right, there you go. So it adds a nice texture, a nice ambience, especially in the quiet verses. It just gives you a sense of space. And then real quick, let's just bypass everything. I didn't do this last week, I forgot to just bypass what we had done that week. But let me bypass everything to remind us how far we've come uh, from the beginning of this song. So we'll let it roll through the chorus and I'll be bypassing everything, EQs, compressors, delays, reverbs, and our saturation plugin on the mix bus. And remember, these are all free and stock plugins and uh, we've just only done 50 minutes of mixing so far. Here we go. go huge difference right we're able to do a lot in only 50 minutes and that's the point I'm trying to make here is if you go for the big wins you can mix quickly and also mix on the important things so next week we're gonna wrap this up what we're gonna look at give you a little preview is a little bit of automation and a little bit of what I call sweetening thinking through the song to make sure it's radio ready, whether you go on the radio or not. That's just the phrase I use. And I'll explain all that more in next week's video. You don't want to miss that. 
Um, also a couple little bonus things I'm going to throw in there to show you that make a big, big impact. And then we'll wrap this up and see how far we've come in 60 minutes. If you missed any of the videos, you can watch them all here on YouTube and on the site. Look for the one hour mix and subscribe to the videos if you want to be alerted to when the next one comes out. And of course, like I always say, join the list, join the mailing list to get my best material absolutely free, including the Smart Start to Mixing series, which shows you how I gain stage my tracks before I even mix. And this makes a humongous difference. A guy on Twitter even was saying last week that he finally gain staged his mix for the first time properly, and the drums sound ridiculously better now, and that had nothing to do with any plugins. He just did that to set up his mix to sound better in the digital domain. It's very simple stuff, but I got a whole hour video that shows you how to do it, and you can get it by joining my mailing list absolutely free. Hope you have a great weekend. I look forward to showing you our last video in the one-hour mix series next week. Take care.